And obviously we'll get to, you know, some of the bigger companies you worked for in the future. Were you finding that you two were starting to work in other indies or was it mostly just SoCal Pro at that point? It was um, it was mostly SoCal Pro. What was weird is so many places would not team us like that. I was like, no, man, like this is the new thing. This is like what we're doing. And they're like, yeah, no, like we're using him like this. And uh, we want you over here in these like junior four ways. And I was like, mm, we're a tag team. We have gear now and music and merch like we don't want to do that and so many local companies would just would not put us together john ian who was the pwg ring announcer and, and uh upw ring announcer among other duties there um he had opened a school called mach one in anaheim it was right near disneyland and they ran shows every single friday and they had, had a couple big like convention shows and i was like oh i want to work for this company and they would not book me and i was like oh this sucks uh and eventually they gave me a call like hey you know we want you to do one of the friday shows and i was like okay um so i worked all day with my gear in the car drove straight there after work and like took forever i was in like all the traffic in the world and i was like oh man like this sucks and then when i got there um we had only teamed like twice at that point so i was like not expecting to team with him but what I didn't realize was that, like, he was, like, their main guy. Mm. And I was, like, in, literally in the first match of the first Friday show. I was, like, oh. The first Friday show they ever did, I was in the first match. I was, like, oh, okay. Um, and I was, like, so are we going to be teaming up here? And they, like, didn't want to do it. So, like, two months went by. And then we won the tag titles down in San Diego. And I was, like, come on, please team us. And then, so me and Peter Avalon were a team in a lot of places instead. Uh, you know, he is one of my... Like, he is my brother forever, one of my closest friends. Like, he's always been my benchmark that I try to catch up to. He's clearly in the he's, – he's, he's, you know, he uh, he's a big star. Yeah. You know, he I've, I got some catching up to do. But it's been fun, you know, trying to be, like, side by side with him this whole time. And at the time, we were tag partners. We were called the Billboard Boys. And we, uh, we you know, we'd come out to Kesha and dance and little jackets. <laughs> and, and it was fun, man. I love being partners with Peter, too. And I was like, you know what? Kevin's really freaking good. Me and Peter are both really freaking new. We started pretty much at the same time. I was like, if Kevin takes off, like, you know, like whatever. But like me and Peter have a good thing going too. And so we ended up feuding at like Peter and I were a team that split and feuded. And then Kevin made the save. And then we were a team there finally. And I was like, oh, and then I, that was it. Once we were a team every freaking Friday night in Orange County, dude, like we were getting like everyone was using us. Like, we started to work, like, all the time. We were doing Lucha shows, San Diego. Like, whatever there was doing in San Diego, we were doing it. Orange County, L.A., we were doing it. And then the goal in mind at that point was PWG. Yeah. And and Kevin had just started PWG in 2009. Like, right when we started teaming, he started doing singles there. And, you know, I was like, oh, I'll get there too, bro. Don't worry. I'll catch up. I'll catch up. Um. You know, but he was barely, you know, he had to work his ass off to get there because at the time it was still really tough. I mean, it's always going to be hard to get a get an opportunity at PWG, let alone yeah. keep one. But he was doing great there, turning it up, keeping one. He was teaming with a couple people, uh, like randomly, you know, throwaway tags. And then finally I get the call to be in PWG and I was like, fuck yeah. And they're like singles against Brian Cage. And I was like, what the hell? I was like, <laughs> why is no one teaming us? Uh, but that's how it was presented to me, too. They're like, you know, hey, like, they're thinking of either you or Willie to debut against Brian Cage. And I was like, and they were, and I was just like, I mean, you know, Willie, at the time, basically, like, me, Peter, and Willie were like, this, like, we were next. We knew we were next. Yeah, next um, line in the scene. Yeah, yeah, we just knew it. We just knew it, you know? Like, we were all, and we were all, like, super close. Like, I mean, I spent every weekend with Willie, like, three, four days out of the week, I was with Willie. Uh, at Kevin's apartment in Orange County, you know, like we'd crash there, sleep on the floor, watch Lucha in the middle of the night. Um, and, you know, Peter too, like we'd always be crashing places. And so we just said, we were a super tight little group, group of friends. And we just knew we were doing well. And we felt the responses on every show. We could see it on our selling shirts, you know, as relatively new guys. And um, then, so it went, Peter debuted at, uh, one of the anniversary shows and then i was next and then willie was the show after that so we debuted back to back to back so it was like oh peter got there damn i'm all right well one of us is next and then it was me and it was like all right sick willie you know willie surely willie's next and sure enough that's the way it was so my first show was against brian and i think that worked well because rockness monsters was married 
to natural selection, Brian Cage and Sean Ricker or LA, LA Knight, you know? Yeah. Uh, we wrestled them literally every Friday for maybe four months on top of NWA tapings, on top of NWA house shows. Like, so we were always wrestling Ricker and Brian, like all the time. And we would do that thing, you know, where Yuma's taking on Ricker while Cage takes on good time. And then we swap it the next week, build to another tag. Oh, a tag where we're on the same side. Just all that. We did everything with them. So I think like it, whoever Super Dragon was asking, like they're like uh, Yuma can get killed got by Brian. It'll look great, and thank God, you know, I work really, really well with Brian. I always have, and he took care of me, and you know, made sure that he killed me in the safest way possible. And people liked seeing me get hurt, so I, I got to come back. And they were like, "Oh yeah, like um, you're gonna get beat down after because Brian Cage had just joined the Taylor Boys with you know Chuck Taylor and Russ Taylor. He's now Brian Cage Taylor, and they're beating me up. And Rocky Romero and Johnny Goodtime made the same." And it was supposed to be the next show was supposed to be Rock Ness and Rocky Romero against the Fighting Taylor Boys, and it didn't happen. But I didn't care because we had planted the seed for me and Kevin to be together. That's all I cared about. Do you know why it show, didn't happen? Uh, no, I don't think. I think Rocky ended up not being on that show at all. So for uh-huh. him, it might have just been a scheduling thing. Gotcha. Um, because I would have been a really good match in my opinion, even though you know I was still only three years in at the time, um, and the weakest of the bunch. I think that would have been killer. But yeah, and then that very next PWG show in December, Cyanide, uh, we were the Rockness Monsters against the Cutler Brothers. 